Josh, in your experience, what do you think are some of the it's two I think it's twofold, right? What do, what it what do you think are some of the issues with I guess like the cybersecurity industry as a whole right now? And that can come from the companies looking for talent mm-hmm. and also the people that are trying to get in. Yeah. Um, so one big problem is, you know, people are always like, there's a lot of cybersecurity jobs and like, and there's a talent gap, but, um, the, the P a lot of companies don't want to hire somebody with like, you know, quote unquote, no experience. Um, because a lot of the time the company doesn't actually like, they can't train them because they don't know, they don't really know how to do it. They, they want somebody that can already at least do some stuff and figure some stuff out. So that's that's kind of the problem because um, like they don't want to train new people. So you have to like train yourself uh, in terms of like the people trying to get into the industry. You have to like you have to train yourself up with like a lot of repetitive like hands on stuff and a lot of effort and study. And you have to like have something tangible to show for it. Um, remember, it's just like a you have to basically manipulate people into hiring you like manip- like convey to them if you want to say it in a positive way, like can like make them believe that you know what you're doing and that you've done similar XYZ things before. Um, Cause if you don't have any actual experience and you don't have anything like tangible, like a portfolio, it's, you know, your chances are like way less likely, I guess, than somebody who has something to show like what you actually did. So uh, I guess to summarize problems, uh, companies don't want to hire, hire new people because they don't know how to train them at all. And the, the new people don't have experience and they don't have anything tangible. That's kind of like the, the, the gap I'm feeling with my like content and my course uh, and stuff, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I agree. And, uh, I think what was it last year or whatever year it was, I actually made a video to debunk like the entry level or all these jobs they say exist when I went on CyberSeek and I was showing them that, Hey, they're kind of lumping all these other jobs up as being cybersecurity jobs when they have aspects of cybersecurity, but it's not a pure cybersecurity job. So it's like, mm-hmm. that is another reason why the numbers are a bit inflated. And you're right. I mean, I've told people plenty of times, I say, I can't really tell you the last time I was actually trained. Like once they bring you a senior level or above, they expect you within a week or two to just hit the ground running. So there, there is no training. And like one of the things I've been talking to clients with now, because pretty much also my specialty is like helping people get on the blue team. So IR, SOC analyst stuff, that's, I'm going to go to guy for that. Mm-hmm. I've been telling them, say, okay, cool. Even if you're interviewing for this entry level role, I'm going to help you seem like you are a tier two or tier three, because you're going to have to really wow them in order to get this nod. And my latest client will start Monday with a job from Yahoo. And they specifically said, Hey, you outperform your resume. Oh, wow. And so Damn. that is the goal too. It's like, like you said, like you may not have the best resume, but if you can really market and sell yourself in that interview, mm-hmm. that's really all that counts. It kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier. So, and that's the hard part. A lot of people don't know how to interview. It is tough <laughs> to expect somebody, especially somebody that doesn't have a lot of experience to just come in and interview well. And knowing that sometimes the interviewers are going to ask them questions that they possibly don't know or don't even know how to prepare for what they may be asked. Like that's, I wish interviews would be, have like, I'm not going to say you should have a study guide, but it should be something to, to where you can at least know a little bit of what they were actually about if it's related to the job versus stuff that really doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I have like some strategy to try to help people deal with that, that involves like, you know, the job description and chat GBT. Um, but yeah, yeah I, I agree. Yeah, I, my simple formula for the blue team stuff is like whether there have been questions I've been asked in interviews or whatever, like because they're they're pinned to my LinkedIn, but they're just scenario questions. And I tell all clients that come to me and say, oh, I want to be a SOC analyst. I say, well, you know, go try that, you know, those questions and see how you do. And sometimes it's like, well, I don't know this answer or whatever. I said, well, check it out. When you're working in a SOC or IR, every alert that fires, you're not going to know what it does. You're going to mm-hmm. have to use Matter of fact, tell them in an interview, I would Google, you know, this file path or see what it is. Cause they're going to say, good. That's what I would do too. <laughs> but I was like, yeah. I wouldn't answer them. Cause I was like, the goal of this is to show you how to think. And that's like the hardest part of that. It's like t- taking that switch off and just knowing how to analyze it and being able to decipher, is it malicious or is it not? And when they escalate and when they're not, 
and being concise in what you do. Like those are the things that they're looking for. And if you can get that, you'll do good on pretty much most you no know, entry to mid-level soccer roles, at least the interviews. Nice. Yeah. 